The single most critical accessory that I'm going to add to my rigged Pro Angler 14 is Lowrance Fish Finder technology. I'm going to install a hook reveal 7 with a triple shot that has down imaging, side imaging, as well as traditional broadband sonar. It also has some newer mapping features like the Genesis Live mapping that allows you to create your own mapping, as well as a card slot for something like the CMAP Pro to give you 4,000 lakes and detailed contours in coastal waters. The Guardian transducer mount is installed at the factory on the Pro Angler series kayaks. That's the retractable transducer mount, so that's perfect for this side imaging transducer that we're going to put exposed externally on the underside of the Guardian plate. When we're transporting it or coming in for a landing or launching the kayak, we'll retract that transducer up into the hole so it's completely protected, but then deploy it once we're on the water for the best performance. Before you turn the boat over to pull the Guardian transducer plate off, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this coffin-shaped guard there. You're gonna wanna keep this line intact for now. Uh, you don't want this line to retract back into the hole because you'll have to work to feed it back through there, but keep that intact now just removing this plate so we can get the transducer cable up through there when we're working on that side. This Guardian mount makes it super easy to install these Lowrance transducers. So first step though, you gotta pull the plate completely off of the boat. So just those three screws there, unthread those. Next step, we're gonna pop this through plate out because we're gonna install the scooped plate for the side scan transducer. And then later on down the line, we're gonna remove these six screws around the plate. That'll allow the uh, suspension feature to be activated from the cockpit and allow the, the bungee feature to work. These are holding the plate fixed. You'd keep those in for a downscan transducer install, like if you were installing a bullet or a split shot. So you wanna insert this scooped plate. This is a nose bump that's gonna protect your transducer from head-on collisions and we're reusing the screws that we're holding that flat through plate in place. So I'm just going to start those a little bit by hand, fasten those all the way down and you can slip the transducer in through the top like that. For the triple shot install you're going to need to utilize the extension tab assembly and this can be found in the small parts pack that ships with your kayak. But these two tabs slot into the vertical posts here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install one of these C-clips with the open end facing the tip of the screw. And install that onto the screw. Then you're gonna go onto the extension tab and through the second one and then the opening on the C-clip facing that second tab and then the nylock nut. And I'm going to thread this on just lightly. You're going to slot those uh, ridges down into the vertical post and you're going to push that all the way down all the way until it bottoms out and with your 3 8 wrench and Phillips bit. Go ahead and tighten that assembly to the posts. Let's see here. Those tabs are going to reach forward to the transom mount that's molded onto the transducer. For attaching the transducer to the extension tabs, um, you're going to take these two friction washers that come in the kit. So I like to fit this black washer between the transom mount that's molded onto the transducer and the extension tab. And I'm gonna go in with my screw just to hold that washer in place. The second friction washer is gonna go on the other side between the transducer and the extension tab. and all the way through. 
And then I've got a little washer. This little washer is gonna go right on the end of the screw. And then my nylock nut. Nylock nut is gonna go on there. And I'm going to just tighten that down by hand. That 3 8 wrench and a Phillips bit's gonna tighten this assembly down. And I'm gonna go most of the way and then make sure the transducer's nice and straight before I button it all up. Just make sure that transducer's gonna sit as close to the nose bump as you can get it. And make sure everything's all straight before you tighten it down. Since the transducer is only secured to the mount at the very front of the transducer, it's going to be fine like that, but for an extra measure of security to keep this thing snug and to keep it stable, I'm just going to put two 3 16 holes on either side of the back end of the transducer and run a zip tie around it. I'm just going to go one hole on either side. I'm going to start that and then pull it away from the boat. And I can do the same thing. I'm just gonna eyeball it. You can measure it so it's exactly even if you'd like, but I'm gonna run my zip tie from the inside of the transducer, mount around the back end of the transducer, and then that way the buckle portion of this is on the inside of the plate. And that's not gonna affect your reading at all. Uh, it's going to transmit that signal right through that zip tie. It's not going to affect the way it performs. We're just going to want to remove these six screws. That'll activate the retraction feature. What I'm going to do now is just get all this transducer cable fed down through the scupper above the cavity there. So I'm gonna just pull that all through. So one thing you wanna be sure that you don't do, uh, you don't wanna trim the transducer cable ever. That's gonna affect the performance of it and it'll never be the same. So you'll just coil that up when we get to that step and uh, stash that extra cable inside the hole. So untie this bridle line, and it's important that this control line is routed from the wide end of the scupper guard. So it should go over the pulley from the wide end of the scupper guard, and then down this way. So it's already routed correctly from the factory. We just have to bridle it up now. So. series of overhand knots works just fine. If you wanted to install a clip there or something, you could do that as well. And I'm going to even just tie a stopper knot. That way we know the line's not going to pull. That knot's not going to pull through. And I want my attachment point of the control line to be just even with the center of those two vertical posts. So I'm gonna push that scupper guard right through. It's pretty critical that we do this step with a Phillips head manual screwdriver just to get it started. And the last thing we wanna do is cross thread these screws as we go into the brass inserts. And now you've got that suspension feature that'll be controllable from the cockpit. That's really nice. We've got our transducer cable threaded all the way up through this scupper above the transducer cavity. Now we're gonna pull off the three-way through-hole plug. And when you're working with these through-hole plugs, it's important to use a manual screwdriver 
not so much pulling the screws out, but especially putting them back in. And we'll take that gasket off as well. And we're gonna punch out one of these solid plugs because that's gonna go around the transducer cable back into the housing and then we're gonna seat everything in there. Before I go back into the opening in front of the scupper hole above the transducer cavity, I'm gonna visualize how the gasket's gonna sit beneath the three-way plug. So there's a lipped side to this gasket and a flat side to the gasket. You wanna have the flat side down. So I'm gonna go in through the gasket with the plug on the end of the transducer cable. I'm gonna go in on the lipped side and then down into that opening. And I'm gonna go ahead and reach through and grab that transducer cable. And you may have to help it with your other hand there. I'm just gonna pull everything through. Leave a little bit of slack to work with. Just rest that gasket there. And then the next step is going around. The next step is going around the transducer cable with the proper size uh, rubber grommet. And then you're gonna fit it right to the housing there. You wanna make sure this wire grommet around the transducer cable is seated evenly and snugly in the housing. And then I'm gonna use a manual screwdriver to secure the plug. Don't over tighten it, because that can affect your seal and you can also damage the threads that have been cut into the plastic for these screws. And then we're gonna pull that into place and we'll secure it with the screw. Be careful not to drop the screw down into the cavity at this point. It could be a little bit difficult to fish out, uh, but we're just gonna thread that on there and that's gonna keep lures and hooks and weights and stuff from going down into that cavity. I'm opening up this fish finder power kit at this point. There's a couple zip ties I'm gonna need for the step where I tidy up all that extra transducer cable. So I'm just getting access to those right now. In the kit is a battery holder with a clamp that lets it go around the sail mast inside the front hatch. And then a Nakwa Lithium Pro power kit. This has some wiring components and things with it. So we'll show you that when we get to, to that step. Um, and you're gonna utilize this when you set up the power cable. Since I'm already working with the transducer cable, I wanna go ahead and um, coil up the extra cable. I'm gonna leave a nice long tag end at the end though, so I can go out of the through hole fitting in front of the seat in the cockpit. I'm gonna leave almost an arm's length of cable outside the loops. And to keep this tidy to those wire ties that are included, I'm gonna trim my tag ends off here. I'm just gonna lay that inside the hole and off to the side for now. Now we're gonna pull this three-way plug off. And this plug's gonna work the exact same way as the one near the transducer cavity scupper. And this is where the Nakwa Pro Power Kit comes in. I'm gonna need the wiring components and the power cable for the Nakwa out of there. And these are adhesive lined heat shrink butt connectors. Those will give you a nice watertight seal for those salt guys. I probably recommend that style of, of wire connector over time, that might hold up a little better. The Hobie waterproof plugs also have a dielectric grease that coats the wire ends, uh, keeping it insulated from corrosion. So those work as well. 
pull that Lowrance power cable out of the box. And your Lowrance unit's gonna come with a fuse. You'll wanna wire that in line with the red wire coming from the fish finder power cable and the red wire coming from the Nakwa power plug. I'm gonna put this black heat shrink over the Nakwa. And then you'll need a crimping tool. A proper wire crimper would be a better tool, but sometimes you have to work with what you've got. So, insert that black lead from the Lowrance. I'm gonna crimp that down around. I've pulled the fuse out of the box that the Lowrance comes in and I'm gonna do all my wiring and then I'll um, insert this fuse into the fuse box. And for this one, I'm gonna use the Hobie waterproof wire connectors. A little twist as you go in and try to push some of that casing into the opening of the butt connector. I don't know if you can see that, but we've got the wire strands exposed, exposed with where that metal contact is inside the butt connector. So leave that like that before you close it down. And then insert that red wire from the Lowrance power cable and use a pair of pliers to compress this. And when you compress it all the way, you'll hear a little pop. And you'll see visually see that dielectric grease come through that butt connector and coat the wires. So you can see it kind of oozing out there a little bit. That's telling you you've got a nice secure installation. So we're gonna repeat that process with the other end of the fuse. We've got our power cable that we just finished setting up and the transducer cable exiting the opening here for the three-way plug. And you've got rubber grommets included in the small parts kit with your kayak like we mentioned before. You can do two separate wire fittings around these cables where they exit through the through hole plug here, but I'm choosing one that's got two openings in it that can accommodate both plugs just to keep things a little cleaner. So I'm gonna pop that uh, solid plug out and I'm gonna insert the gasket, the flat side down over the plugs first. Bring that all the way down. Then I'm gonna go around my transducer cable first because that's a little bit wider. Then I'm gonna go around the power cable. And this one's a pretty tight fit, but that's okay. You want a good seal on it, so tight is good. And we're just gonna press that into the housing and kind of massage that rubber grommet a little bit to make sure it's seated flat and you've got a good seal on the cables. And then I'll butt that gasket right up against the edge, or right up against the bottom of the three-way plug, and then I'm going to align my holes in the plug housing and secure these screws right back into the threads that have already been cut into the, to the kayak. And you want that gasket just like the one above the transducer cavity, you want the gasket to compress only slightly. You want a nice smooth seal all the way around. And so what I like to do is loosely install one of the screws. I'm gonna flip this up like a gate to open that 
clamp up and you want this notch in the top of the battery holder to be facing the sky. And I'll just put that up against the sail mast receiver and you can flex this clamp a little bit. I'll rotate it right around that mast receiver. And then I'll set that in place and I'll get this installed. This Nakwa battery is actually going to Velcro right around the frame of the battery holder. And the nice thing about this battery holder is you can actually fit two Nakwas. I'm going to pop the plug end out of the pouch just slightly so I can get to it. And I'm going to go right around the frame and Velcro it with the logo out. I'm going to use one of the zip ties from the Fish Finder installation kit to zip tie the Nakwa plug so it stays up off the floor of the kayak. And so when you remove the battery from the kayak, you take this into your home to charge the battery and you're left with just this uh, installed power cable on the open end there. You can keep the moisture out of it. I would apply some kind of uh, like a dielectric grease coating periodically. So stretch that rubber band end around that plug. And then you're just gonna bring this up and cap that. We finally arrived at my favorite step, which is setting up the head unit and attaching it to the A-Trail. 10 30 seconds mounting hardware that I'm gonna use to attach the Lowrance bracket to our Ram fish finder mount. Any fish finder that's got this style mount, the Elite TI2, uh, if you've got an HDS that you're installing, this is gonna be the mount for you. I'm gonna go in through the top with a 10 30 seconds screw and a small washer that fits in there. I'm actually gonna back it with a washer and a nylock nut. I'm gonna insert our inch and a half ram ball into the other end of the double socket and I'm gonna attach it to the A-trail before I attach the head unit. I find that to be a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna... And the nice thing about the A-trail clamp is that you can slide it to the position of your liking. Uh, you want the screen to be easily reachable from the seat so you can manipulate the settings on the fish finder unit. I've pulled the knobs out of the box that the Lowrance came in. I'm going to loosely install those to the head unit, get a few threads in to secure the head unit to the bracket. <coughs> You'll notice that there's an SD card port in here for a storage card or if you wanted to insert a mapping card like the CMAP Pro or a Navionics chip can put that in there. It's important though that if you're inserting a memory card into your Lowrance unit, it's got to be a 32 gig card or less. Those two detents on the transducer cable indicate that that's the top of the plug and you've also got an alignment ridge right there. You want to align that at the top and just at the center of the plug. You get a nice watertight seal with these plugs. They're a little bit easier to install than the other style plugs that have the threaded nut on them. Again, I'm gonna reference the detent and the alignment ridge for the power cable. These corners are left open coming from the Lowrance factory. You can notice there's holes that go all the way through. These will be used in the event that you wanted to attach a sun visor, like a Burley Pro sun visor or something like that. But since we're not going to do that, we're going to finish off these corners with the fittings that come packaged with the Lowrance. Just press those in and you can pop them out in the event that you ever need to access those mounting holes. I choose to mount my Hook Reveal 7 triple shot on the right hand side H-rail 
And the reason for that is I'm right-handed. I can get to the screen and manipulate it a little bit more accurately with my right hand. Um, so the left side of the boat becomes my fish landing side and I can cast from either side with the ram ball attachment. Um, I can pivot this down low enough to where it doesn't really interfere with my casting or me working a bait, but I can manipulate the screen a lot easier and change the settings as I please. The hook reveal is the new generation of the Hook 2. The screen's a little more crisp and you've got some of those built-in features like Genesis Live mapping and SD card slot. The seven inch screen gives me good target separation. And so it's a really sweet spot as far as size for this Pro Angler 14 kayak. I chose to mount a side scan transducer because the guardian plate and the retractability of that makes it ideal for mounting a side scan transducer. If you were installing a different transducer, like a skimmer that goes on the interior of the plate or a total scan, the same general installation process as far as running the cables and everything is gonna apply. The only places that the installation process is gonna differ a little bit is in mounting the actual transducer. The total scan through bolts through the plate, the bullet and split shot will attach to the vertical posts on the interior of the Guardian, um, but everything moving forward once you've got the transducer mounted is gonna be exactly the same. Hobie's given our users a head start with the fish finder installation process, especially on Lowrance Ready and Guardian equipped kayaks. We've installed the through hole plugs for you. And so the installation process is really pretty simple, but if you prefer a Hobie dealer carrying out this installation process for you, you can locate your local Hobie dealer on www.hobie.com and there is a dealer finder at the top right of the page. You can click that and search by zip code, city or state, and you can find your local Hobie dealer that will help you out with this install. To explore our line of fish finder offerings and Ram fish finder mounts, go ahead and visit the gear tab on hobie.com and download the parts and accessories, kayaking and eclipse catalog, where you'll find the whole spread of what we offer for Lowrance units and Ram fish finder mounts.